A bird strike at or around the airport while the aircraft is taking off at a low altitude climb or during landing is not uncommon. Bird strikes which occur when a bird collides with an airplane have also been reported as high as 4,500 meters. Irrespective of the altitude, bird strikes pose a significant threat to the safety of an aircraft and its occupants. While only one fatality occurs due to bird strikes every billion flight hours, bird strikes can cause considerable damage to the aircraft. In January 2009, a US Airways Flight 1549 Airbus A320 flew into a flock of birds shortly after takeoff from LaGuardia Airport in New York. The impact caused a dual engine failure and forced the pilots to glide the aircraft into the Hudson River. All 155 passengers and crew on board survived the crash and were rescued via boats. Due to the dangerous nature of the situation, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, has been taking proactive measures and developing technologies to counteract the increasing number of bird strikes in the United States. Between 1990 and 2021, there were around 255,000 reported cases of wildlife strikes with civil aircraft in the United States, 15,400 of which occurred in 2021. In comparison, just over 2,000 cases were recorded in 1990. Almost 300 people were killed and about 300 aircraft were destroyed over three decades. In 2021, bird strikes in the United States cost $328 million in losses resulting from aircraft damage and nearly 140,000 hours of aircraft downtime. As more planes take to the skies, especially newer, quieter aircraft that birds may not hear from afar, the FAA believes there will be a rise in bird strikes. Furthermore, while the general population of birds has decreased over the years, the number of large species has grown, and it's often these birds that lead to more significant damage. The FAA found that most bird strikes happen during the daylight hours of July to October, with a higher incidence occurring on an aircraft's arrival rather than departure. 71% of bird strikes occur below 152 meters above ground level, but those that occur above this altitude are more likely to cause damage. One approach the FAA is taking is to modify airport landscapes to make them less attractive to birds. This includes adding spikes to flat surfaces such as runway signage, planting certain less appealing vegetation types, and modifying water features and other landscaping elements that may attract birds. Around 2014, the FAA began researching other methods to enhance their bird avoidance strategies. The first was a radar system in the cockpit that could help pilots avoid birds. Unfortunately, the technology was not ideal. Apart from generating false alarms, the antenna was bulky, difficult to install, not to mention expensive. So the administration looked into creating a system that could alert birds about approaching aircraft. Since birds can see red, green, blue, and ultraviolet colors, the FAA experimented with replacing typical aircraft landing lights with a pulsing ultraviolet LED light that birds could detect. Compared to the radar system, this technology is easier and less expensive to install and requires more straightforward maintenance. During tests, the FAA found that birds would fly off if the aircraft had the ultraviolet LED light on. When it was turned off, the birds would return almost immediately. The administration estimates that birds can spot a plane with the light on from 152 meters away, compared to 99 meters without the light. This gives birds more time to fly out of harm's way. The FAA continues to test the LED light in different weather conditions with various bird species. While this may be the best bet for planes to avoid bird strikes at this stage, artificial intelligence and cloud technology could eventually offer better solutions. Still, the safety measures are focused on more than just the birds. The aviation regulatory authorities also have airframes integrity requirements. An aircraft size and passenger capacity generally determine the level of airframe integrity required by the regulatory authorities. Smaller commuter category airplanes, typically 9 to 19 passengers, must show adherence to a specific extent of impact with birds. Transport category airplanes, over 19 passengers, must have a greater airframe resistance to bird strikes. 
The Code of Federal Regulations, or CFR, defines the bird strike integrity rules for different types and speeds of aircraft. For small commuter airplanes, CFR Section 23.775 states, windshield panes directly in front of the pilot or pilots in the normal conduct of their duties and the supporting structures for these panes must withstand without penetration the impact of a 0.91 kg bird when the velocity of the airplane relative to the bird along the airplane's flight path is equal to the airplane's maximum approach flap speed. For such aircraft, the maximum approach velocity ranges between 220 and 300 km per hour. In this case, the manufacturers are concerned with force exerted by a small bird relative to the approach speeds of the aircraft. The CFR states the bird strike requirements for transport category airplanes in Section 25. Section 25.775 requires that aircraft windshields and their supporting structure withstand without penetration impact with a 1.8 kg bird at the design cruising speed or VC at sea level. Moreover, the regulation requires the airframe to be capable of continuing safe flight after impact at sea level or 0.85 VC at 2400 meters. In such cases, the speed criterion is provided to ensure adequate resistance against the impact at a much higher altitude. Section 25.631 of the CFR requires the empennage structure to be designed to assure continued safe flight after impact with a 3.6 kg bird at VC at sea level, including consideration of control system elements. Notably, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, or EASA, rules for bird strikes on transport category aircraft differ from the CFR rules from the FAA. For the aircraft manufacturers, it means that if the aircraft is being sold in Europe and certified by EASA, it should withstand the impact of a 1.8 kg bird. Conversely, the aircraft sold and certified in the US must be designed to withstand the effects of a 3.6 kg bird. Nonetheless, the new airframes undergo rigorous impact testing before they are certified for integrity. Do people often ask why engines aren't simply protected by mesh or screens? Commercial airlines aren't usually equipped with meshes due to the potential trouble such systems could cause. In practice, a bird being dragged in by an aircraft's engine may travel up to 1,287 kilometers an hour. The impact could significantly damage the meshed wire or similar protection at such speeds, making the situation even worse. Broken pieces of mesh protection could fall into the engine and destroy it. Without the mesh, the bird could just be digested when sucked in by the engine. Former National Transportation Safety Board or NTSB member John Goglia noted that wire would hardly make a difference. Moreover, a heavier screen may break and fall into the engine. While unpleasant to think about, it's easier for the engine to break down birds than other heavier materials. Despite not being the answer, there have been several efforts to provide solutions. For instance, inventor James Thomas previously filed a patent, abandoned in 2016, that revolved around a mesh. The abstract of the patent reads the following. A bird guard device for protecting aircraft jet engines from being damaged from ingesting birds during a bird strike is provided. The jet engine has an outer cowling with an open front end. The bird guard device comprises a mesh deflection screen capable of being mounted within the open front end of the outer cowling. The deflection screen minimizes the chance of birds getting into the jet engine. Some aircraft have experimented with screens, such as Soviet military planes, including the MiG-29. Regardless, there has yet to be a long-term commercial solution in place. For now, airlines are focusing on other prevention and management techniques. Ground initiatives are valuable to the fight against bird strikes. All international airports have secure boundary fences to block animals from entering the field and runway. Additional moves are in place, including managing grass to prevent birds from sheltering. Furthermore, sites often deploy speakers to blast distress calls as a deterrent. Facilities even control insect populations and look at holistic food chain management systems. If large birds or sizable flocks are seen near the runway, Pilots should consider delaying takeoff or landing if the fuel supply allows. They are also advised to land at another runway if available. Boeing summarizes its advice with the following. 
Descend with idle power and avoid extended low-altitude level flight, particularly over watercourses, nature reserves or other areas of known or expected bird activity. When landing is assured, consider landing through birds versus a missed approach to avoid birds. This reduces the energy of the collision, the potential for increased damage associated with engines at a high power level, and the potential for multiple engine ingestions at low airplane energy states and low altitude. Avoid or minimize maneuvering at low altitudes to avoid birds. On March 10th, a LATAM Airlines Columbia flight suffered a bird strike while departing from Kukata International Airport en route to Medellin International Airport. According to data from FlightRadar24.com, the crew returned to the terminal and cancelled Flight 4361. Subsequently, LATAM also withdrew Flight LA4015, which was supposed to occur between Medellin and Bogota El Dorado International Airport that same day. No injuries were reported due to the incident, but this bird strike highlights the increase of birds in Colombian airports, a worrying trend that has been cautioned by local airlines in the past. A few days earlier, a Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 was forced to make an emergency landing in Cuba following bird strikes. The aircraft took off when the bird strike occurred and returned safely to the airport, where passengers exited the plane via emergency slides. While the incident was handled quickly and professionally by the Southwest crew, explosion-like sounds, oxygen masks and smoke in the cabin would have made for a terrifying experience for many on board. Another recent example is Indian low-cost giant Indigo Flight 6E646 from Surat International Airport to New Delhi Indira Gandhi International Airport, which had been diverted to Ahmedabad Sardar Vallabhai Patel International Airport due to a bird strike. The flight, operated by one of the airline's Airbus A320s, registration Victor Tango India Zulu India, joined the fleet in November 2018 and is four years old. After the aircraft encountered the flock of birds, it was taken out of action for the rest of the day for inspection. However, it was back in service on February 27th. Passengers affected by the diversion were quickly reaccommodated onto a new flight from Ahmedabad to New Delhi with Victor Tango India Alpha November, a nine-year-old A320 for Indigo operating 6E6042, departing from Ahmedabad to New Delhi at 12.17 and arriving at 13.28. As reported by the India Times, the N1 vibration after the bird strike was 4.7 units, and once the aircraft was safely on the ground, the plane was inspected for damage. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation, or DGCA, investigation noted damage to the number 2 engine and the engine fan blades. Bird strikes can be unexpected and dangerous, but authorities often work on clever solutions to solve the problem. It's important to remember that airplanes are a great way of transportation that humans invented, but the skies are an unnatural space for us. We should learn how to travel through the skies without disrupting wildlife around us and their natural habitat in the best way possible. We hope for a future where humans and birds can take it to the skies without harming each other. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.